This is how we make Quaid Vaughn. This is how you make movies. Right. <laughs> lot more complicated story than with the previous ones. With Quaid Vaughn 3, we're trying to keep away from the whole sort of inside jokes as much as possible. You know, a lot of people will watch Quaid Vaughn 1 and 2, and although the jokes are funny, I'm the Great Pumpkin! Such as that one, some of the jokes were inside jokes. People didn't really get it. They're like, whoa, what? So the idea now is we're trying to keep the jokes, you know, something everyone's going to laugh at. It's still funny. Just, you know, you don't have to be in the loop to necessarily get it. We stepped it up a level. We're taking it. We're taking it to the next the next notch. This guy's crazy. We're throwing in the Michael Bay explosions everywhere. I mean, this is not your ordinary, like, third grader film. This is like this is like high production here. Oh, see, making Quavon 3, I think, would be it. It's like almost an impossible task, and I think we've done a pretty good job of doing it. I mean, we're a bunch of kids, we got responsibilities and stuff. We're also goofy, and I mean, when the cops are coming at you, and you're running down the highway, or you're dodging traffic, I mean, you know, we've done about the best job we can do, even better than most people in our position. So I'm really proud of what we've done. I know a lot of people were nervous about the whole doing a Quaid Bond, like without David or Matt Dove or anything like that. And, you know, hopefully, you know, you guys will be proud of what we did. It's not the same people, and, you know, you're not going to necessarily see it as the exact same character. We want it to be a little different, you know? It's like James Bond. You don't want the Roger Moore James Bond to be exactly like the Pierce Brosnan James Bond. And I think Patrick brings a good sort of new look on Quaid. I'm able to play Quaid Bond, probably the greatest hero ever to live. And he's he's a, a cool guy. I mean, he's he models himself after like Vin Diesel and Hulk Hogan and Justin Timberlake a little bit, but it's not too much. And yeah, I like I like playing him a lot. Um, growing up, and his he you know he thought he was Quaid Bond from a very young age, so he was always thinking that he could throw a pie at me with no consequence and. I'd have to rub it in his face most of the time, but you know he's a, he's a good he's a good actor. He takes it over the top, and that's what the character calls for the greatest action hero ever. It was it was a lot of fun training for this for this role. I uh, I dodged bullets. I was in the military for like twelve for like twelve months trying to prepare for this role. Um, yeah, but I hope people enjoy this because I I did a great job in this movie, and other people did alright in this school. but uh. Hope you guys love it. Well, I think what the thing about ninjas are they embody the real American hero and some Canadian heritage in there. Um, they're killing machines, they're awesome mammals, and I'm just really proud to, to represent one. Hey there, kids. Remember, stay in school and don't do drugs. Oh, God. Uh, well, first of all, it seems that Ninja gets all the crap thrown at him. Um, he has to be humiliated in public, he gets th stuff thrown at him. Uh, the worst things happen to him, he has to fall in the pool, he has to run across the highway, it's bad stuff. And that costume is like 100 degrees in the summer, it's all black, it's not fun. But I enjoy it very much. Well, in this, this story, Ninja's working, uh, he's not doing too well, he's working at a fast food restaurant and things aren't looking up for him, he just wants to go back being a ninja. And then things kind of turn around for him when he meets up with Quaid Bond, they go on another adventure. And things go downhill from there really fast, so. How's being ninja, dude? <laughs> huh? How are you liking this? Well, someone tried to ask me for money. <laughs> and then someone asked me if I was Moses. <laughs> and then... Uh, I don't know. It's just funny that I'm not the crazy one here. We have some uh, new characters in Quaid Bond 3. We have Mercedes, she's sort of the new Bond girl, the, uh, you know, attraction for Quaid Bond, maybe the love interest. Uh, we have Maledict, our new villain. He's evil, but he's a different kind of evil from uh, Doom, which I like that. It's more of a sarcastic, sort of sinister evil. He doesn't have anything really 
special about him, like, you know, a cool mask or oh, he wears, you know, claw hands or anything like that. Maledict's evil is just pure evil. And in order to get a character like that, we had to find someone who really was pure evil. I think when you watch the first two movies, you'll see that Nolan is probably like one of the brainchilds behind these movies. I just couldn't picture anyone else doing on Earth. Nobody else is kind of crazy or wacky enough or just they wouldn't fit. It'd be too weird. He is on Earth. He is the man. It was so awesome to actually see him do the scenes with the new cast and it just worked so well and I'm really happy about it. I think everything that was great about the first two Quaid Bonds is like doubled in this movie, like everything we've taken it. It's full length and we pull out all the stops, we do the craziest stuff. We're embarrassing ourselves, we're it's actually got a, a awesome plot line. I'm really excited about, you know, finishing it up and looking to see how it looks on film. I can't give away the whole the whole story for the movie, but you guys are in for a treat. There's the Dark Queen, she's ruling the world, crazy stuff. There are teddy bears involved. I can give that away. It's going to be awesome. You guys are going to love it. And I hope the anticipation's high because we're going to meet it when it comes out.